Today we're going to be exploring the difference between a flat square brush and a round brush. So today we're going to do an activity where we're experimenting using a flat and a round brush. So the flat brush actually has a square tip. All right, the brush, the bristles of the hairs are closer together and it's thinner. The round brush is actually smaller and it's got more of a round arrangement of the hairs. So you can see the difference of these two. Now the flat square brush is used for filling in large areas. All right, painting things that are more square, doing lines, filling in things like a sky or any square object. A round brush is used for filling in smaller shapes, rounder shapes, and doing details. It creates thinner lines. You can see the difference here between the two lines that I've made. And I've experimented also by doing shorter strokes with each brush, all right, and kind of some dabbing motions to create texture. And you can see I've done a lot of similar things with the two brushes, but they turn out differently. Now the round brush is used for filling in areas that are round, also with points. And I drew some shapes in here, but I'll fill them in when I go in and do my practice again. And when you guys practice this, you'll notice that it's easier to fill in areas that are smaller with the round brush. So everyone's gonna get a large piece of paper divided into two sides. This side is for the flat square brush and this side is for the round brush. And we're gonna do the flat square side first. Everyone will get their own paint and you can choose whatever color you want for this. You're only gonna need one color. And before you get started, you actually want to make sure your paint brushes are wet so that the paint can stick into the brush easier. If you need to get off some of that extra water, dab it on the paper towel. And I'm gonna go in and grab some paint. I'm kind of flipping the brush over. With the flat square brush, there's two sides, and the paint will stick in the middle, but you do need to make sure that you get the whole thing coated. I'm not submerging or dipping the whole brush in the paint, I just want the hairs to be covered. Now I'm gonna go in and make some long stripes, and I'm gonna start on one end and move to the other. When you're doing this, especially with the stripes, you wanna make sure that your elbow is off the table. So when my arm is up, I can move my paintbrush easier. So I'm gonna start here and I can move all the way over to the other side. I can do another one. Now you're gonna notice after a couple strokes, the paint is gonna start to look dry. That's gonna tell you you either need more paint or you need to flip it over. So if I look at the paint on my brush, there's more paint on this side than the other side. So I can either go back and get some more paint or I can just flip my brush over. And I think this time with the paintbrush, I'm gonna press a little harder to make the line thicker. So I'm pressing a little harder. I'm not smashing the brush but this is gonna make the line a little bit wider. And I'm running out of paint so I can go get some more and I can bring it back to the beginning, pressing with the brush. I'm not smashing the hairs of the brush. I'm gonna flip it over now. And I have a thicker line. I can go in now and use the top part instead of the flat edge grab some paint and I can experiment and see what this is gonna feel like now. Much thinner of a line. I'm still running out of paint a little bit so I can flip my brush and I can practice with these lines a couple times. I can press a little bit harder. I'm still using the tip of the brush but I'm still getting this thicker line. I can practice making short strokes, so not a whole line, but little lines. Put my brush if I need to. I can even do short strokes up and down.
if I want, I can draw a square because we are using a square brush. It's gonna be easy to fill in shapes that are square. So I've already almost filled the whole shape in just by drawing it. And now you'll see it's very easy to fill it in with the paint. I can go in and create some texture. I'm not smashing the brush when I do this, but I'm just doing little dabs of paint. It's almost like sponge painting. And as you use the paint, you'll get a nicer texture when the brush is a little dry. I can practice making a rainbow line. And you'll see that's easier to do with this flat brush. Now I'm done practicing with the flat square brush. I'm gonna move over to the round brush. Get rid of some of that water. And I can practice making thinner lines. So I don't need too much, uh, need too much paint on the brush because it is smaller, so it's gonna use less paint. And I can go ahead and start to draw some lines. If you add more pressure and press harder, you're gonna get a thicker line. You can see I'm pressing down with my brush a little bit more. I can make a thinner one again. And then I can practice some other lines. I can use the tip of the brush, kind of standing up on its toes a little bit to create more detailed lines. Get more paint. I can make some dots. I'm not smashing the brush. I'm just doing simple little dots. I can draw some shapes now using my round brush. And then I can fill them in. And I can go ahead and experiment with more lines. I can do short strokes to get some control with the brush. And I can do tall lines up and down. Keep going to get more paint. When you feel that the paintbrush is starting to get dry, make sure you keep going back to grab more paint. I can practice with texture. So now we can see the difference that our lines have made. Thicker lines with a flat square brush. <coughs> Thicker lines with the flat square brush and more detailed smaller lines with the round brush. This helps us fill in more details as well.